Hey fellow creatives! Today we're going to talk about this painting in particular. This is going to be a pretty short video and I want to kind of show you the details of how I created this painting. As artists we either know the theory but don't know how to apply it or we can see oh that looks good we see the application but we don't know the theory behind it or how to recreate it. So I'm gonna be explaining a little bit of that today. And at the end, I'll tell you how I created the smoke effect in this painting. So stay tuned. Timestamps are in the description, so let's get into it. So this painting is called Vibin' in the Chaos. It's probably my favorite painting that I've created to date. The first thing I want to talk about is color. First point being complementary colors. Complementary colors are really important to understand. It's why I lay out my palette in the order of yellow, orange, red, green, blue, purple, or violet. I can go from outward to inward on my palette and say, okay, yellow is way on this side, purple is way on this side, purple and yellow, complementary colors. Orange and blue, complementary colors. Red and green, also complementary colors. So I'm going out to in, so that's why I lay out my palette that way. On the painting, first let's talk about the background. So why did I choose this bright blue kind of teal background um, for most of this painting? Do you hear my cat? Anyways, so the reason I used this blue, this light blue as the background, is firstly because when you are first looking at this painting, I want you to squint your eyes real quick at this painting and tell me What's the first color that jumps out at you? It's probably some shade of orange, right? Fergus, why are you mad at me? Why are you crying? Everything is okay. Oh my goodness. We have a lot of orange down here in his cloak. We have a lot of orange on his hat. And what's the complement of orange? It's blue. And the reason I chose a light blue is because a lot of his face and his body are dark. So there, it pops more, there's more contrast when there's a light color surrounding it. I also used complementary colors on the subject himself. So if you look closely at his cloak, most of it is orange and red, but I again used that kind of teal blue to offset that orange and really make it visually interesting when most of what you're painting is one color, it can start to look boring. A lot of what I do, just because I really like bold colors, is to just get, get a dab of that compliment and just like start putting it on there. That teal blue really makes the cloak pop, makes that orange come out even more. And I also wanna point out his skin. So in my source photo that I was using, most of his skin was in the shadows, which is why a lot of it is extra dark. It's not just that he is that dark with melanin. That's why I used a lot of really dark colors on his face and on his neck. But if you'll notice and look closely, I do use a lot of dark purple um, to create those shadows. At the same time, I don't want him to just look purple, right? Because he's not a purple guy. What I did was I created a dark yellow color and made sure that I put it in some places near the purple because even though when you're looking really closely you just see purple and yellow when you step away that purple and that yellow optically mix and create more of a brown color. Secondly I want to talk about warm and cool colors which this completely transformed the way I painted when I learned this. I'm not talking about Warm colors are your red and oranges. Cool colors are your blues and purples. No, forget that. That's not what I'm talking about. Each color family has cools and warms. So there are warm blues and cool blues. There are warm reds and cool reds. And that applies to all color families. Take a look at this painting and just make a mental note of what pops out at you. What is your eye most drawn to? For me, it's probably his hand. My eyes drawn to his hand and his ring. Also the tip of this cigarette. 
and maybe a little bit the brim of his hat and the highlights on his cloak. The reason that you're probably more or less agreeing with me is because those are the places where I used warm colors. The really cool thing about warm and cool colors is you need to remember that when you're painting, you're gonna use those cool colors for your backgrounds and what's supposed to be further away from you in the painting and use warm colors for what's coming at you, for what's closest to you in the painting. And that's really gonna give your painting a lot more depth so that you're able to lead the eye of the viewer and just make your colors really pop. If you're wondering, how do I know which colors are warm and which are cool if it's not what I was taught in elementary school? Oh no. I am going to link a chart that I made down below with some common painting colors and whether they are warm and cool. Warm or cool. The last thing I want to say about color is even though a lot of this painting is really dark, I never use pure black. Never use pure black in your paintings because if you just use black without mixing it in anything else, your color is going to look flat. I always mix my black with a dark blue, like in this case I think I used a lot of Prussian blue, or I might use dioxazine purple or alizarin crimson, and I used them usually on something that I wanted to recede, so those are also all cool colors. And I used that black and Prussian blue over here in this dark part of the background. Also, the dioxazine purple in the black in part of the face. Next, I want to talk about something else having to do with depth. It's kind of blurring things in your background. Well, not necessarily in your background, but those things that are receding from you. For example, I don't really care about this back part of the brim of his hat and I don't want him to look like a cutout of Where's Waldo, right? I don't want him to just look like I like cut him out of some other picture and pasted him on this background. So that's why I kind of left the outline of his ears kind of messy and slightly messed up and then messed up this part of the brim of his hat on both sides that is receding from me. If you identify those parts of your painting that are less important, they can be less detailed and your lines shouldn't be as clean. These parts of your painting that are coming at you, like his armband, those lines are really clean because it's right up at you. It's something that you should probably focus on when you're viewing the painting. Next, I wanna talk about chiaroscuro. I have talked about this concept in a previous video when I talk about charcoal drawing. I will link that video above if you want to see that one as well. But chiaroscuro is basically the concept of, well in Italian it means light and dark. If you have a really light part of your subject, the background beside it should be dark to create more contrast. And inversely, if you have a really dark part of your subject, the background beside that should be light. It just creates more contrast, makes your painting more visually interesting so that your subject isn't blending into the background. So in this case, his face is really dark because it's shadowed by his hat. Each side of his face where I knew that was the case. However, on this side of his cloak, I do have some highlights. So I didn't mind putting that dark color with that black and Prussian blue right beside his cloak. And finally, it's just like a little bonus from this painting. This was actually the first time that I had ever painted smoke with oil paint. I've actually seen quite a few YouTube videos of how to create a smoke effect with acrylic and watercolor, but not really with oil. So here's just a little tip on how to do that. Use Galkid. I'll put the link below to the Galkid that I use, but Galkid, if you don't know, is just an oil paint thinner. It makes your paint go further, makes it flow better. The first thing I did was these light parts of the smoke that are not very defined. I used a lot of Galkin, a little bit of white, and a little bit of blue. Now this smoke is in the foreground, so I used a warmer blue, but most of it was Galkin on that first layer, so it was very thinned out paint. And I just painted the general shape of the smoke to kind of lay a base 
for where the smoke was gonna be in those thin parts of the smoke. I started using more paint and less galkid and building on that thin base that I had created. Really paying attention to how the smoke curled in the picture because you want it to look very natural. So that's pretty much it. I went from very thinned out paint to a little bit thicker paint. Um, but the most important part is you can't do this without Galkin. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've seen another painting that I've done, maybe in my YouTube shorts that you would like to know the process behind it, let me know. I wanna know which paintings you're interested in. Don't forget if you're not already subscribed to poke that subscribe button and I'll see you in my next video.